just open my eyes that I may see. Lead me, oh Lord, won't you lead me? I think I may have asked this question before, but can anybody play an instrument? No, we know Sue can. And we know Margaret can, because Margaret's played the piano before. Did, can anybody else play? What can you play, Yvonne? Guitar. Oh, guitar. Dylan? Okay. There. <laughs> anybody else? Rod? Common recorder. Common recorder. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, as well as, with, as the, uh, the comb and some toilet paper, I can play that. And the spoons, I can play those as well. But you may recall a few years ago, about two, two, well, it must have been nearly three years ago when we had our last church fair, I purchased a harmonica. Do you remember? And I, I said I'd bring it back when I could play it. Well, I can't play it, so I haven't brought it, so, you know, three years, I still can't play it. So. But, you know, it occurred to me this morning that on this wondrous day when we can open up again, when the government has enabled us to have some freedom, this Freedom Week, that we can sing again and we can open up and we can use our true free-given instrument, which is our voices. Yes, it's the God-given given gift, isn't it? What greater gift is the voice that we have within us? And on this day, I thought, well, what better day to discuss this God-given gift under the topic, God's instrument. God's instrument. And we shall have three divisions this morning. First, how are we God's instrument? We shall discuss this. And then, what do we play? If we are God's instrument, what do we play? And finally, the effect of being God's instrument. And so, our predominant text this morning, which I wish to refer us to, is taken from our New Testament reading, which was the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 16. Now, the King James Version says that the Lord said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. In our Bible here we have, My teaching is not mine, but of God who sent me. Now, when we hear this, Jesus is in the temple, and those around him have heard him give his message, and have said, how can this man speak in such a way? He was never taught of the letters. How can he speak? And the Lord says, my doctrine, my teaching is not mine. Now we may have what may regard as a contradiction there. Because John himself at the beginning of this book says that the Lord is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was manifested. So if this, if Jesus is God, then why is he saying it's not his word? But there's no contradiction, friends. There's no contradiction. Because Jesus is explaining to those who are around him that the word that he is giving, the message he is giving out, is not of man as he stood before them in flesh and blood, but indeed of spirit. Earlier in the book of John, we hear Jesus say, God is a spirit and is to be worshipped in spirit and truth. He said the Son does nothing of himself, but only whatever he sees the Father do. Chapter 6, 63. Jesus said, the words I speak are spirit. They are life. The words were God's. That was the word. But Jesus was conveying them in a human form. In the same way, friends, this is how we are the instruments of God. We have the words within us. And yet we give them out. We are the instrument by which God uses and we expel the words, don't we? We are the instrument through which his words are channeled. Now, as his, as his instrument, what do we play then? What do we play as an instrument? Now, being, by means of illustration this morning, if we consider ourselves as an instrument, what notes do we play then? If 
For life is a musical score, if we see it that way. And for those who are the musicians in, in the room, well, know that your notes go up and down and up and down and sideways, and so is life for us. A semi-clef, semi-clef, is it clef? <laughs> you can say I don't know music, sir. Whatever they're called. The dot, dip, dot, dip, dots. Up, down, up, down. That's life, isn't it? We're on our musical score, and our notes will accord. Now, any good piece of music, as we know, has good notes. The good notes. We play these well. The high C. Is that a high C? I don't think that's a high C. It doesn't matter. The good notes. And the good notes that we give out as the instrument of God are praise. First and foremost, this morning on this glorious day, with our voices we've sang praise to God. That's a good note from us this morning. Praising him, worshipping him. Indeed, just one little aside, when you consider the last thing that Jesus did according to the Gospel of Mark with his disciples after the Last Supper, he said, they sang a hymn and then went to Garden of Gethsemane. To sing is a wondrous part of worship and it's great to be doing it again today. That's the good note. We also, when we give love, words of love and kindness and compliments and compassion, these are all God giving us out, good notes giving out. Every now and again, though, <laughs> like my singing, we'll hit a dud note or a bum note, oh, like Les Dawson playing the piano. Ding, 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 dong, down goes one. And yes, we do give out the dud notes, don't we, sometimes? These can be various things such as pride. In our reading, we heard Jesus address this very, very matter. Chapter 7, verse 18. Where Jesus then saying it, it is not his teaching. Indeed, it is the God, his Father. He goes on to say, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. And we do that in time, don't we? We speak of ourselves and like to look at me. And we've addressed this recently. Certainly in today's society, there's a bit me, 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 and a bit more me. A bit of pride coming in. And indeed, that's where sin comes from, isn't it? It's all pride. We get angry because we feel we've been slighted by somebody else. Or impatient. Oh, come on, I've got things to do. Me, 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 and a bit more me. It's thin, the bad notes, isn't it? And we do expel them sometimes. We give them out. A word of annoyance, a word of anger. They come out of us, the instrument of God. The bum notes, shall we say. But they don't always, we'll hear them come to us, but they don't always sound bad, a dud note. In 1995, now I'm going back a few years, folks, I'm giving my age away. 1995, I was in Dudley, and I met a man by the name of Doug Hartman. 1995, and I spoke to him, I would estimate no more than two minutes. Never met the man before. Two minutes. Never spoke to him again. I believe he passed away in 2005. Why do I remember Mr. Hartman? Mr. Hartman had the greatest voice I have ever heard in my life. Why do I remember it 30 years on? This voice was like silk. It covered you. He was an articulate gentleman. He spoke very well, but his voice just smooth. 30 years on, that's anyone mentioned a voice, Mr. Hartman comes to mind straight away. And I wonder sometimes, just quickly, if only we could have heard the voice of Jesus. What would Jesus' voice sound like? Undoubtedly, it's the same but better. But he drawed thousands to him. As Mr. Hartman drawed me in, in two minutes. And I don't suppose you know the name of Mr. Hartman. Yeah, there's no reason really. You might do or you might not. And the reason I went to see him because he was an author. And he'd wrote a book, you see. And I'm going to hold the book up. I hope everybody can see, but I'll read the title in any case. For those who can't say, see, the title of Mr. Hartman's book is King of the Con Men. King of the Con Men. Mr. Hartman had been given this title of King of the Con Men by the Sun newspaper 11 years before. He'd spent 25 years in prison. 
He was a confidence trickster. And I could gather why. <laughs> Two minutes he got me. I was just talking to the man. And you'll see on the front, it's depicted. The picture is two hands shaking and one is a snake. One's the serpent. I can only attribute, but I do not, I'll come back to Mr Hartman. Please don't let me finish without speaking to Mr Hartman. The devil draws us in the same way, doesn't he? The same voice. Hello, come on in. How are you? Wonderful voice, said Mr Hartman. And we have these notes within us, don't we? We, sound, we say sin, sinful things at times and we don't mean to, but we do. But how do we overcome them, friends? That's the point, isn't it? How do we overcome these dud notes that we play as a God's instrument? Well, as Sue and as whoever else, Yvonne and Rod and, and Gillian will tell us, how do you overcome dud notes when you're playing an instrument? Well, we all know. Practice. The amount of times I've heard my nephew, Chad, playing that trumpet. He's getting better, though. He's getting better. He's practicing all the time, folks. Grade five, here he comes. Practice. And it's the same with our notes, which we give out. How do we overcome the dud notes in our lives, which we give out? We practice. And we practice giving the good notes out. We give those out on a more regular basis. That's what we do. Indeed, in his letter, James, the, the Apostle James says in his letter, gives us an example of how we can use our voices to overcome these dud notes. He says, chapter 5, verse 16, confess, confess your faults to one another. What better way to overcome these things by getting them out there, vocally speaking them. My friends, this morning, I wish to do this for you. I wish to put this to practice. Because I'll never stand before you as my friends in here at this church of God and ask you to do something that I won't do. And this morning, I'm vocalising my confession. Well, my temptation, shall we say. For the past three weeks... No, no, no. That's, that's not right. past three months, I've been debating. The devil's been in my ear all... About a temptation. Right up to this morning, and you're about to help me get rid of this. But I'm vocalising this, what Jesus says. Confess. Friends, you may feel the same as me, but right up until this today, I don't want to pay the TV licence this year. I really don't. And the devil's given me good reasons why not to, because you can always find a reason, can't we? I don't want to pay the TV licence this year. I don't watch the BBC first and foremost. I don't watch it. At all. Secondly, I don't think it's a neutral thing anymore. It's more biased. It used to be British broadcasting down the middle. No, I think it's politically biased. And three, it denies now free, pe free licences to over 75-year-olds, which I think is an absolute disgrace in this nation. I don't want to pay it. I really don't. I have a TV. I don't want to pay it. And there's times, I must be honest, when I said, I'm not paying it. But we know what happens. Friends, I've got it out there to you now. I've told you this. But because I've confessed my sin now, <laughs> I'm buying it. <laughs> I'm buying it, aren't I? Because I can't stand before you next week and you know he hasn't bought his TV licence. <laughs> you see what God's done? We use his words, confess. Get it out there. Jesus faced temptation, didn't he? He faced it. The Son of God faced it. And how did he deal with it? He spoke. He didn't internalise. He spoke. Every time the devil tempted him, he said, It is written. It is written. Man will not live by bread alone. It is, with, it is written. I serve no one but the Lord. This morning, friends, I do the same. It is written. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And give to God what is God's. I don't want to pay the licence. But as Jesus says, give to Caesar what he Caesar's. I'll give the tax. And the Lord has helped me by getting it out there. We are the instrument of God. All things are good for those who believe in God. My friends, I'll bring you my TV licence, I promise you now. <laughs> and you've helped me. But I offer it as an example this morning. If we have a temptation, 
Let's put it out there, because now you've helped me. If you have something to tell get it out there. This is what we are as God's instruments, good, bad, or indifferent. Think of God's words, as I've just quoted him there. How can I go against God now? Give to Caesars what is Caesars. I'll give to Boris Johnson and the BBC what's theirs. But thanks go to God, first and foremost, next. Because by his influence and his word, I'm not going to go to prison now. <laughs> I'm not going to face a fine now. You see where sin leads us off? I may have not paid that, but next I'm going to knock, knock, knock on my door. And then a fine, and then a prison sentence. Give to God what is God's. We are his instrument. We play the notes and we practice getting the good notes out, saying his word. So finally, what's the effect? Well, at chapter 7, verse 46, we hear that on the last day of the Lord's appearance in the temple for that festival, the priests and the elders had sent the officers to arrest Jesus, for want of a better word, arrest him. And when they come back without him, what do they say? They say, where is he? And the officer says, never has a man spoken like this man spoke. Never has a man spoken like this man spoke. When we are the instrument of God, friends, when we speak the words of Christ, the Spirit flows, as Jesus said. The Spirit will flow like living waters. And it's to be hoped that those who hear us express the words of God will say, I've never heard anybody speak like that before. If we've forgiven somebody for their sins, maybe they'll say, I've never heard somebody do that before. That lady spoke like I've never heard her speak before. This is the power of the God's instrument within us, the voice, his words. And I do want to come back to Mr Hartman, the king of the con men. Why was I seeing Mr Hartman? I went and had Mr Hartman's book signed. Let me, wrote, let me read what he, he signed to me in there. To Lee. God bless you. Douglas Hartman. Galatians 5, verse 22. Mr Hartman was quoting God. You see, he was a born-again Christian in prison. He had turned to Christ... And he was now going around prisons, telling the other prisoners, the young lads, because this was a man of mature years when he was in prison. He was 65 when he was in prison. He was mid-70s when I met him. And for many years now, he'd gone around preaching the word of Christ. God was using his instrument. This glorious voice was now within prisons, telling other, other prisoners how to turn their lives around. Picture of me with him. I'm the one with the hair. God had used his instrument. And let's hope that people say, never has a man spoke like this man spoke. Friends, when we play the notes of God, we play a melodious tune that warms our hearts, comforts our minds, and is sweet, sweet music to those who hear it. Let us be the instruments of God. Let's play his tune every day. And on this wondrous day when we're opening our voices and singing loud, may God bless you and amen. Lead me, Lord.